Ketones are very similar to aldehydes. You will see the C double bond O that we saw in the aldehydes. The only difference is it's going to be on an inside carbon. And that's why I have an R here and an R primed here. Now I'd like to draw your attention. Students often spell this ketones like that. No, 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 there's no Y. So K-E-T-O-N-E, -E, ketone. What do we call this C double bond O? I think I forgot to write the name here. This is a carbonyl group. So the name of the functional group of ketones, carbonyl. Some people say carbonyl. Okay, the physical properties are going to be very similar to the aldehydes, so you can check back into that video. Again, they're not able to hydrogen bond with themselves, but they can with water. In terms of naming, we see the suffix O-N-E, which is own, pronounced own, not one. Um, if you have a carbonyl group that is not the highest in priority in the molecule, then we name it as a prefix uh, by oxo. In terms of priority, if you have a look over here, I've rewritten the priority list now for category A. B with the d multiple bonds and, and priority list C are still the same, so I've only written what's changed here. You'll notice the aldehyde is the highest priority, then the ketone, and then the alcohol. Now, I made a point here to leave a blank so that you can decide for yourself when you need to number the carbonyl group in a ketone. And you'll probably be able to make that decision after you think about drawing them or look at drawing them and naming them. So here we have a three carbon ketone. One, two, three. That puts the carbonyl group on carbon two. And if I'd numbered from the right, it would be the same thing. Now, do we have to say propan two own, or is it enough to just say propanone? Well, my question to you would be, what happens if you had only two carbons? Can you have a two carbon ketone? Is that a ketone or is it an aldehyde? Well, being that the C double bond O is on the end carbon, that makes this a formal group, which is an aldehyde. So in fact, you can't have a one carbon or a two carbon ketone. Those are aldehydes. And so the smallest ketone is propanone. And there's no other place for the C double bond O to go for this to be a ketone, so we don't need to number where it is. Okay, just for your information, the common name of propanone is acetone. And you'll recall from the aldehyde lesson that a set typically means two carbons. But can we have a two carbon ketone? No. And so since we cannot have a two carbon ketone, this, we refer to propanone as acetone. And that's a familiar solvent. Perhaps you've bought nail polish remover. And you've noticed you can't wash nail polish off, but acetone-based substances um, can dissolve those lacquers and finishes. Okay, try example B and then check in with the video. 4-chlorobutanone. You'll notice that that carbonyl group on carbon 2 is not numbered when we write butanone, and that's because in a 4-carbon structure, if we put the carbonyl group here, then we just number from the left. If we put it in this position, then we number from the right. And so there's really only one place to put it. It's always going to be butin 2 own, and so we don't uh, write the 2. And so this molecule is named 4-chlorobutanone. So going back up to the naming set of instructions right up here, right? Fill in the blank now. So when do we have to number the carbonyl group? Not for three carbons not for four carbons, and so five or more carbons. So we'll slide the screen up here and you can try examples C and D. And when you finish those, move on and draw example E, 4,4-diethylhexane-2,3-dione. 
Okay, in example C, we find the longest continuous carbon chain. You'll notice it's not the horizontal one. If you move up or down for that matter, you could have found five carbons. So we numbered to give the carbonyl group the lowest possible number. That puts an ethyl off of three and a methyl off of three. And so alphabetically, we have E before M, three ethyl, three methyl, pentan, two ohm. In example D, Ignoring the phenyl, I'm trying to give the carbonyl group the lowest possible number in the parent chain. Left to right puts it off of carbon 4, right to left would have put it off of carbon 5. And so I number from left to right all the way to 8, find the phenyl group off of 7, and the carbonyl group off of 4. So 7 phenyl octan 4 own. Okay, perhaps you've already drawn question E here. I'll catch up to you. You can um, re play the video in a moment. Okay, so I have, I'm just numbering my carbons here so you could follow along. I've got hex, so six carbons in the parent chain. They're all singly bonded. There's the ane. Off of carbons two and three, I have carbonyl groups. And then off of car carbon four, there are two ethyl groups. And so we have four, four diethyl hexane, two, three dione. Okay, last part of the lesson here, looking at the reactions. So just like primary alcohols oxidize to aldehydes, we will see now that secondary alcohols oxidize to ketones. And so these are oxidation reactions. So I've given you an example here of, the, of a secondary alcohol. So you'll notice that the carbon that the hydroxyl group is bonded to which would be this one right here, is itself bonded to two other carbons. And so that makes this molecule a secondary alcohol. Now, in the oxidation reaction, we need an H from the hydroxyl group and an H from the carbon that the OH is attached to, to together those two H's plus oxygen from the oxidizing agent form water. What's left behind? the ketone with the carbonyl group off of carbon 2, and so we formed acetone. Now taking a look at example or reaction B here, if we were to try to have this oxidation reaction occur, right, you recognize O with the round brackets, there's our oxidizing agent. You'll notice there is still an H on the hydroxyl, there has to be, but now there is no hydrogen directly bonded to the carbon of this tertiary alcohol. And so because there isn't, like there was up here, right, we won't get this water and this tertiary alcohol then does not react. So that's important to know. If you see a tertiary alcohol and I'm asking you to oxidize it, no reaction. Okay, last example is reversing then that oxidation reaction, so a reduction reaction. We're essentially hydrogenating the ketone. We're going to add the two hydrogen atoms across the carbon, uh, the carbonyl group, the C double bond O, and that will put the H's back onto the oxygen and the carbon, which reforms the secondary alcohol. And that's it for ketones.